This is Stephen Davidoff, the Deal Professor for the New York Times Deal Book. And I'm here with Ethan Klingsberg, who's an M&A partner at Cleary, Gottlieb, Steen and Hamilton. Thanks for having me. So Ethan, how is the M&A market shaping up to look? This well, you know, we have a lot of strategic corporates out there that were able to get away before, up until a certain point in last year with really doing nothing. And now uh, shareholders and frankly management really want to shake things up much more. Uh, and not just build their liquidity, but uh, build, go out and do strategic acquisitions. Sorry to interrupt you, Ethan, but yeah. let's focus on that management element. We've seen sure. in J. Crew, Exco, management buyouts are very much in the news. And I was wondering if you could talk about Delaware Chancery Court just issued an opinion in Hammonds. Right. What's the standard for management buyouts, and what are you recommending to clients these days in terms of that? You go back a year, and there was an opinion a year ago. What happened there is you had a company that was controlled by John Q. Hammonds. Uh, for the hotel chain, and he was selling, the company was being sold, and Mr. Hammonds was receiving different consideration than the public shareholders as the insider and CEO. Right. Now, the court held a year ago that, and they portrayed Mr. Hammonds in quite a questionable light, claiming and... Well, going, he did receive his own hotel in connection with that deal, right? Yes, he right? did. He, and he was definitely... Which we all should, by the way. If right. We're, if we're well, as well represented. As a few tax benefits. Absolutely. And the, the court, and the court said, you know, we're going to have to apply entire fairness here. And, and every, people came out of that and they said, you know, there's also some guidelines the court provided to make sure you get into the business judgment rule. And those guidelines included having a special committee process with ind independent directors, a special unwaivable majority of the minority or majority of the public shareholders approval requirement. And a lot of deal makers looked at that and said, we got to start insisting on special committees and a uh, special majority of uh, public shareholder approval requirements. And then this guy, he didn't ha meet those requirements. They went to so trial. So he, did he didn't meet these requirements. Right. The court went to trial. They applied this entire fairness, this high standard that everyone's right. scared of. What happened next? What happened? I have, wasn't there, but I have a feeling Chancellor Chandler decided that Mr. Hammonds wasn't such a bad guy. And they said that the directors did a pretty good job. Yes, they didn't have an maj uh, unwaivable majority of the outstanding public shares as a closing condition, but they got a nice shareholder approval there by a nice, a nice super majority. And they, and they said that they, did a, they did, were deliberative, thoughtful, and they, they passed through entire fairness scrutiny. So okay, wanna, so they passed through entire fairness scrutiny. Not so bad entire fairness. What are, what are MBOs going to do now? Are they going to follow those procedures? Are they going to just go to entire fairness? Or it's not the scary door if you, if you mess up the procedures? It's really, it's, first of all, if you, you, you got to look at your SPACs and circumstances. There's certain situations where it might be very easy to go to the board very quickly, have the board supervise the situation, be on top of the situation, not have the insiders dominating the process from the beginning, and the board is running the process from the beginning, and you can in, uh, avoid entire fairness. But there may be some situations where the only way to get a deal done is for an insider or a controlling shareholder to, take, to go in there and you're going to end up with entire fairness because they're making some, taking some steps before the board is controlling the process. And entire fairness is not a crime. If you, you can still have a good board process and cure things if you, under many circumstances. One of the key findings in Hammonds, by the way, was that Hammonds was not engaged in self-dealing before the board process started. So you weren't in a situation where the shareholders had a choice between either continuing with a self-dealing evil CEO versus uh, selling out in, a, in, a, in that kind of situation. Let's go to the, the final question here, sure. Ethan, which is, it, isn't PR important here? Do you really want to be viewed as the evil CEO? Don't you want to be viewed as the magnificent CEO who follows the process and does things right rather than jamming shareholders down? Well, nobody's jamming shareholders down just because you're in entire fairness. I mean, the only way entire fairness works is if you do have a strong special committee who's got the power to say no, probably exercises the power to say no uh, at some point in the process and really uh, goes out and, if, if possible, uh, runs some kind of market check process. So you're going to have a process where everything is, is neutralized at that point. Thank you, Ethan. This is Stephen Davidoff for New York Times Dealbook. Okay.